Do you ever impulse buy electronic components? Who am I kidding? If you watch this channel, of course you do, and so do I. I recently picked up a few of these boost converters for prototyping. They're pretty darn cheap, but that doesn't mean they're any good, or, or are they? Let's find out. I recently came across some cheap boost converters on Amazon, and these claim to take 5 volts in and boost it up from VN to 25 volts. I'm always a little skeptical of cheap components, but I was curious how well they actually work. So join me for a couple tests that I like to run to do a quick check of a supply, and we'll put this thing through its paces. First off, let's measure the output ripple. You can do this manually, but I prefer to use the power app on the scope, obviously. To set it up, we simply probe our output and set up our measurement. We can get a better measurement with a better probe, but this standard passive probe will work just fine. To set this up manually, put your channel into AC coupling mode, zoom in, and make your measurements. We have a micro USB input, so naturally we'll use 5 volts as our input voltage, and our output voltage is clocking in around 20 volts. So when we set up these ripple measurements, we see that we're getting about 300 millivolts peak to peak and about 70 millivolts RMS on our 20 volt output. And I'm pretty happy with those values, it's just a couple percent, but ripple on a supply rail translates to noise throughout your system, so for audio work or jitter sensitive designs, this might not be the best supply to use. With my cursors, I can see this is about a 10 kilohertz ish signal, but to double check it, it won't hurt to turn on an FFT. I'll do an FFT, I'll set my start frequency to zero hertz, and my stop frequency to 80 kilohertz. And I like to use the max hold option to make the FFT a little easier to see. Only use this though for consistent signals, it's not a good option for one-off measurements. With the FFT, I can see my peak is actually at about 9 kHz, and we have a couple harmonics. I also see some 1 over F action here, but my gut says this is likely an artifact of the sawtooth shape. Notice how this varies from cycle to cycle? That's going to smear out the power over a range of frequencies, which is likely what we're seeing here. Let's also take a closer look at the signal. Do you see these little spikes here? If I measure the frequency of them with my cursors, I would bet this scope that it's caused by the boost converter switching frequency. It looks like one megahertz, but don't be fooled. Let's grab a few single captures and see what we get. It looks like these spikes actually happen every 350 or 360 kilohertz. And let's see what we find if we pull out the part number of this chip. It looks like there's a 350 kilohertz internal PWM signal driven by an oscillator. There's also a mention of a 1.2 megahertz fixed operation mode, which is pretty easy to see on the scope as well. Data sheets are great, but being able to verify it with the scope gives me a lot more confidence in this converter. Another fun fact is I could only find these chips for sale on this site. It's $2 for one chip or 18 cents each for 20, so sort of a no-brainer there. There are also only 850,000 available, so if you want one, you better act in the next decade or three. So we learned a lot from our ripple measurements. The other two things I like to check on my converters are the turn on and turn off characteristics. I'm gonna use the scope app to measure these, but you can also do this manually by setting up a single shot trigger. Let's walk through our wizard and check our turn on. The thing to watch out for when a power supply turns on is inrush current. When applying power right away, the inductors and capacitors aren't automatically at steady state, they have to charge up. This can pull a lot of current and do some damage, so it's worth checking. In this case, we see some interesting behavior. It looks like it boots up to one voltage level, sits there, and then moves up to the final output level. If we check the datasheet for the switching chip, we see that it actually has a built-in soft start function, and it looks like it works pretty well. You'd still want to test this on various loads or your specific load before moving on. And last for today is the turn off test. What you don't want to happen when you turn off your supply is to have weird power spikes or discharges into your system. You can set this up the same way as the turn on test manually, but again, I'm gonna use the app. And a simple power off test shows that things perform as expected. You'd still wanna go check your currents before plugging this into a sensitive device though. Overall, this is a killer little supply and well worth the $1 just to have it on hand if I need something quick. The Power App also does a lot more than just these simple tests. You can do a full suite of switching tests and all kinds of other measurements that are really tricky to make manually. If you look through this channel's history, we actually have a lot of videos on power testing, so we'll link some of those in the description below. 
I know a lot of people I talk to have a go-to power chip that they use. If you have one that you like, put it in the comments. I would love to see it. And now let's draw today's winners. Five winners will get a DSLX 1204G oscilloscope. Five winners will get a U1282A DMM. And one winner will get their choice of a tier two prize. Today's winners of the U1282A are Devilakunda Shetty, Colton Bauer, Christoph Rosinski, Christoph Harschismacher and James Sweet. The winners of the DSLX 1204G are Ryan Rosenberger, Chris Ryan, Kai Ortmans, Norbert Sadowski, and Ian White. And the main prize winner of the tier two prize, their choice of tons of different gear, Caesar Diet. Congrats to our winners, you'll get an email from us shortly. Tomorrow we're gonna look at power again, but we're going to use a power analyzer and check the line regulation and load regulation of an automotive DC-DC converter. And that's it for today. Make sure to subscribe to this channel. And if you're one of the awesome people that have already done that, be extra awesome and like this video. Thanks for watching. I'm Daniel Bogdanoff and I'll see you right back here tomorrow. And here's my best impression of a DC power rail. It's funny because there's some ripple. Sorry.